I'm Frank Popper, and I'm the uh, producer of the series. Tyle McNary, he may be wrong, but he doubts it. And I'm Tyle McNary, the talent for the series. Tyle, he may be wrong, but he doubts it. The name of your show is Tyle McNary, he may be wrong, but he doubts it. Why do you doubt it? Uh, <laughs> I doubt it because I just feel like um, a lot of people's opinions and answers to these unknown and unsolved questions that we hit on in the show are based off of uh, not experience. I feel like I'm out here in the real world, so my experience is more so than uh, more valuable than like words like mouth to mouth or just guessing. C can I just ask you a qu question real quick? So how did we come up with the title? Do you remember? Mm -hmm. I remember. You used to say that all the time. I may be wrong, but I doubt it. I may be wrong, but I doubt it. I said, you know, after listening to him say it over and over again, uh, I thought, okay, there's a title. I come from the world of documentary, and I like to incorporate as much of my talent, their real life, into the series. So you, you came up with it, and I just said, let's use that. There you have it. <laughs> How did the two of you come together to make the series? So I was hosting and doing alumni work for Gentleman of Vision, which is a great program, mentoring program. Look it up, documentary out. And um, I showed up at practice one day, and my coach was like, mic this guy up, and Frank came and mic me up, and then I was a fan favorite. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like somebody else's story. No, Frank, Frank walked in, he's like, hey, you're a star. Just no, so, wait a get minute. to the camp. Okay, so I'm, I'm gonna provide the, I'm gonna provide the, the truth to this thing. I think you forgot, we met in this very studio here when we interviewed you and three other former steppers. That was before him. Oh. Okay, okay. Oh, I see what you're see, saying. See, That's see. true, that's true. We old, we're that's both true. senior citizens, as you can tell. Right. And I came in to do an interview for the documentary. Um, apparently, I gave a very fluent interview uh, everybody thought it was very, very humorous, so I got called back to have a sit-down meeting with Frank and some higher-ups, and we just like uh, tossed ideas back and forth. We didn't necessarily know what we wanted to do, but we knew we wanted to do something. But you got the biggest laughs when, mm -hmm. the, when the film screened. Everybody loved you. you the, the camera loves you. So uh, I thought, you know, based on that, I knew that the camera loved you, but you have a compelling story. You have a really interesting story. And I thought there was a documentary in you. Right. So I started meeting with Ty, and uh, we'd meet at diners, we'd go out for breakfast, and you know, I would ask him questions, and I'd film him over, over uh, waffles and pan, uh, pancakes and bacon. bacon and eggs. Bacon. 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 Never enough bacon. And uh, <laughs> for about six months, and I just wasn't feeling it, but I was noticing that on the way to breakfast and the way back from right. breakfast, you were giving me these amazing observations about life. And I'd say, I'd grab my phone and I'd say, hey, wait, wait a minute, say that again. Just, right. just keep. At one point in time, it was like, every time I got in the car, he was like, don't say anything. I got to turn the camera off first. <laughs> it was an evolutionary thing. We, we, uh, it took me a while because I'd never done a web series before, but I come from the world of documentary filmmaking. And I thought, oh, wait a minute here, we could do we could do these short little documentaries, this little little episodic web series, and and that's how it came about. <laughs> At the start of each episode, we learn a little bit about Tyel's past. Walk us a little bit through your history. So, I've been through a lot. I've been foster care. Um, I graduated from Riverview Gardens. I'm sure a lot of you know that school didn't have the best reputation, but it's definitely improving now. Um, I'm not really too family oriented. Everybody's really spaced out. I don't have the best relationship with them. But my story, all in all, is just perseverance, like overcoming everything, um, recognizing that challenges are challenges and not pitfalls. I don't have to stop. I can always overcome and keep going. Just keep that fire lit at all times. Also, like through everything that I've been through, I know that I'm really empathetic towards a lot of other people's situations. So it made me want to shine light on a lot of stuff and just be a pillar for those people. Is that what makes you a quote expert on life? Absolutely. <laughs> That's what makes me an expert on life. It's like, it's like I said, it's just the experience of everything. Like I'm only 22 years old. 
So age wise, I wouldn't be the wisest person in the world, but experience wise, like I've, I've been through countless things. I've encountered countless different situations where, and I'm still here today, where you know, you gotta, you gotta figure out the answer. Nobody's gonna do it for you, so. He's kind of giving you the clean version of his background. <laughs> I, I don't know whether you want me to talk about these things or not, but I mean, the pic maybe just from hanging out with you, mm -hmm. I know this guy uh, has gone through more in his 22 years of life than I've been through in my 35 years of life. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> 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 he's been through a lot. He's been through, I, I, don't, I don't know anybody on a personal level who's, who's been through as much trauma, as much, as many challenges. I mean, I, I'll say this, when you look at the series, there's all these, you know, he, he tells his story a little bit differently each time, but it's all true, it's all based in, in fact. And as a matter of fact, we were talking this morning, I s he said he didn't sleep well last night, he was having a hard time. I mean, he is, he is currently homeless, he's living in his car. So uh, here we are sitting here having a cup of coffee and laughing about life. Uh, <laughs> but he doesn't have that typical family infrastructure, but he's managed to figure out how to make it work. And, um, and he does it in a way with grace and humor um, that I think is, uh, I'm stumbling now. Well, if I could just add to that, I just like, own that. It's that bad, like it is bad, it is a hard thing, but keeping, in, keeping it in perspective that like somebody has it worse than me. Like I do sleep in my car, but I have a car to sleep in. So like, that's really like, really is like a motivating factor when I think of like a lot of topics, like I was saying earlier, where you just wanna be that pillar for people, cause I know it's a lot of people who feel like how I feel, where you don't have that family structure, or you don't feel like you got a, a huge support system, where you might feel like you in a big old world by yourself and you're a small dot well, you just feel better about yourself <laughs> when you realize that you're not the only person going through it and it's a bigger dot. <laughs> so, uh, so he's sort of touching on something that I found very compelling uh, in Thailand. And he sees the both sides of, of an issue e empathetically. And so uh, he doesn't really, he, he's, he's very interested in politics, but he doesn't belong to a political party. He sees, he sees issues from both sides. I'm what they call bipartisan. <laughs> <laughs> he, he's bipartisan on all issues and so we've discovered that when we're talking to people no matter how far out they are he he understands and he empathizes with their uh perspective so um i think that what he has to offer these little pearls of wisdom uh anybody can benefit from i've grown from watching my own episodes that I cut together. Mm, Frank's like my little brother. You can't say it. <laughs> yes, I am younger than Ty Allen Spirit. He's an old soul and I'm, I'm immature, so it kind of works out. What sort of reaction do you want people to have after watching an episode? Uh, you know, like when people say um, you have a full day, if you laugh, you cried, you got angry, you did all of that. That's kind of how I want people to feel when they watch the episode. Like I want. I want it to be serious, I want it to be humorous, like playful, I want it to be thought provoking. And when people turn it off, like I just want them to feel like enlightened, almost empowered, like mm -hmm. if I had an idea, I could really just go do it, you know, like, or if I had a problem, I could really just overcome the problem. It's not like I gotta sit here and dwell and just be in this pit of darkness, you know, I can really just overcome everything, so. You know, I. I come from the, the uh, school of documentary filmmaking where uh, I'm not interested it's so much in the issues as I am in making a little movie that will, people will find compelling. I'm drawn to interesting people. I like to do character-driven stories. And uh, if everything kind of comes together, then some kind of an issue will rise to the top. So, uh, you know, maybe some people learn something from it, I don't know. He's like a mad scientist. With the <laughs> Let there be issues. <laughs> I, uh, what has the reaction been by your friends to seeing the show? So, I've got a mixed reaction, all of which have been positive, though. I will say that I've, I have been, I got a lot of support from my peers. Everybody kind of, I've been outgoing and kind of like the life of the party. 
for a while now. So everybody's kind of expecting it. Everybody was kind of waiting on it. Um, after they got to see the show, everybody was like, they're really, really proud of me. They, they glad that I was doing something like productive and meaningful for our community and for society in general, more so than just, you know, going out trying to get fans or just trying to be popping and trying to be on the scene, actually drawing attention, attention to certain things and raising awareness about a lot of stuff. So everything has been really, really positive. Everybody wants to be on the show. Everybody shares it. I get a lot of feedback. And everybody thinks it's really funny too. Everybody loves me, so if you want to love me, you should watch the show. <laughs> What's been the biggest struggle with the show? Mm, I figured we'd make one or two episodes and then show it to the people at the station who had been asking for digital content, and we'd be off and running, but no, it didn't work that way. It's from concept to first episode launch took about two years. Yeah. That, to me, has been the the hardest thing about it. Definitely. And so I would compare it to like, remember when you was a kid and your mom bought you a kite home <laughs> on the first summer day, but it wasn't windy yet. So you got this big old, it's your favorite superhero. I got the Superman kite. It's huge. You just outside running and it's just dragging behind you. <laughs> like fly, just fly for a second. But when we got the gust of wind though, it was, it was pretty good. It was great. Now the kite's flying high. See, that's why I'm behind the camera, and I shouldn't <laughs> really be here. So. Ty, what's your favorite episode? Um, I think my favorite episode is the season. Oh, no, 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 no. It's either white people in the cold, or it's the season episode. I don't know. I just like talking about cultural topics, because it's just it just raises the awareness, like, because it lets you know that, like, we could... Man, it's hard to pick a favorite episode because now the more I'm thinking about it, I like I love my episode on voting as well. And I love the episode because when I got to talk to a lot of Trump supporters, and then I was that's why I was talking about the cultural thing, where after you talk to somebody who has a different opinion, who's on the other side of the aisle, and y'all have a respectable like a respectful conversation where we both listen, it's not a debate, it's not an argument, we're just sharing ideas, we're just having a conversation like two human beings. Then after we leave that conversation, we both leave with pieces of knowledge, and we we leave better like we grew a little bit out of that conversation so i think all of the episodes have really really cultural things and where you get to learn something about yourself and you get to learn something from another perspective that you didn't necessarily see so i love the voting episode i love the seasoning episode i love the cold episode i love all the episodes lastly where can people find the show you can find the show on facebook at tyel mcnary he may be wrong but he doubts it and you can also find it on YouTube on the Channel 9 page.